Welcome back, it's me, Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review. And today, we are looking at this. This is part of Hasbro's Marvel Legends series. We have the Marvel Studios Iron Man 3 The Infinity Saga 2-pack. And this 2-pack features Happy Hogan and Iron Man Mark 21. All right, let's get started. Okay, so first off, um, I purchased this, um, I believe, maybe a week or two weeks ago. Um, as of this recording, it's September 23rd, uh, 2021. So this set's been out for a while. I remember seeing it maybe like, I don't know, maybe like a month or two ago. And when I first saw it initially at the store, I saw it at, at my local Target, um, it was marked for, I believe, $52.99. And it was one of those deals when I was, I was walking down the toy aisle and then it caught my eye right away. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's awesome. And I grabbed it. And then as soon as I picked it up, I saw the price tag on the shelf. And I'm like, there is no way I'm paying $52.99 for this. Um, I heard that, uh, you know, some of these Infinity Saga Marvel Legends figures were going to be priced higher than the average Marvel Legends. And when I saw this, I'm like... Uh, I think I could skip on this. Uh, in the past, I believe like some of the two packs we've gotten might have like been price ranged around uh, thirty nine ninety nine, I believe. So to pay like twelve dollars, twelve dollars more was kind of a shock to me. Like I know that some of the Infinity Saga figures they're not priced at the average nineteen ninety nine. Like I believe Odin's priced at maybe like twenty four or twenty six ninety nine. And for me, it's it's kind of going beyond that. Um, I don't know that that point where I'm not willing to pay for it anymore. Like for me, 19.99 for Marvel Legends is the sweet spot. Uh, for a two pack, 39.99 is the sweet spot. Uh, I'll make exceptions. Like if if the two pack comes with like larger figures, you know, if one of the figures is like a build a figure, uh, build a figure, um, or if it comes with like a buttload of accessories. But in this case, it didn't feel like the 52 dollars was warranted just because. You know, we're getting an Iron Man that's clearly a repaint of, you know, an Iron Man we've gotten before. And as much as I love Jon Favreau, um, you know, the Happy Hogan figure is something that, you know, we've needed for a long time. But at the same time, is this figure worth half the price of a $52 set? You know, I'd say no. But lucky me, um, like a week and a half ago or maybe two weeks ago, my local Target had this on clearance for $37.99. And for me, that's a price I could stomach. That's a price I could pay. You know, that's $2 less than the average Marvel Legends 2-pack. Um, and it's much less than paying, you know, the suggested retail of $52.99. So for me, $37 was cool. I'm like, I, I could go with that. I could like, you know. So here I am. And I'm happy I have it. And I'm more excited that I got this on clearance. So if you're like me... Um, you know, just keep an eye out there. You might be able to find it for like a, a good deal. You know, don't just cave in right away as soon as you see it and pay $52. Because I'll tell you right now, this set is not worth the $52 that it's originally marked for. Like I mentioned, you know, I believe this Iron Man's a repaint of a figure we've gotten before. And um, the, the Happy Hogan figure, it looks like it might be using a lot of reuse. But we'll see as soon as I open it up. Okay, let's start this review, and as I examine the package, I love um, the Infinity Saga boxes. I've said that before. They feel really premium to me. Um, if the design is very simple. It's not overdone. Uh, it has a beautiful black matte finish surrounding the window. The logo is kind of in this, like, has a nice glossy finish. I love the Infinity Saga logo. It makes great use of, like, a... A serif font with infinity against a sans serif font like with sagas here yeah the avengers logo in the lower right corner it looks nice it's it's a beautiful package it's just kind of odd though because this package seems a little too large for just these two figures like i previously reviewed the um captain marvel and rescue 2 pack and when you look at that you see all these wonderful accessories filling up all this negative space whereas here you just get two pairs of hands and it's two blast effects. And I think you also get like Happy's, I think that's his cell phone, I think. Um, the side of the box, 
You get this lovely graphic of the Avengers and Guardians cast on one side, and then um, more of this, more characters on the opposite side. On the back of the box, you get a cool image of Iron Man 3, the poster. And you see Tony Stark here, and he's in his, um, I don't know, he's in his lab with all the different suits of armor, his Hall of Armors. Really cool. It would have been awesome that they, if they actually made like a cool box set where maybe it comes with this version of Tony Stark and maybe like, uh, maybe like half of this uh, image here. So maybe you'd get like half of the lab with maybe like three or four alcoves for different armors. Like I'd pay a premium for that. I think that'd be wonderful. Um, but moving back to the figures we're reviewing, uh, there's two brief bios here on each character. For Happy Hogan, it says Stark Industries' new head of security gets caught in the middle of the battle as Iron Man gears up to face an all-new powerful threat. And Iron Man Mark 21, Mark 21 codename Midas is a fully loaded high-altitude suit built by Stark that's outfitted with enriched gold titanium alloy. Okay. So in terms of Iron Man 3, uh, I want to say it's it's not a bad film, but I think it's my least favorite of the Iron Man films. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the one directed by Shane Black. I think. Um, I don't know. Iron Man 3, it's, it doesn't, I don't know, it's, it's not as memorable to me as the other films. But that's not to say it's a bad movie. But I think they could have maybe gone with better choices in terms of uh, which Iron Man armor they gave us for this. But this kind of makes sense, you know, if if they're going for a simple repaints, you know, I don't think they want to invest the money in a brand new original sculpt. Okay, let's get this thing open. All right. Alright, first impressions of these two action figures as they're still in their tray. Um, honestly, my first impression was it's just more of the same. Um, yeah, so I mean, <laughs> if, you, if you have a collection of Iron Man figures, this guy, even though he's a different color than, you know, previously Iron, than previous Iron Man, it's, it's nothing new. It's nothing that special to write home about. Um, you know, I think the description descri described his armor. I mean, he's, co he's called Midas. So when you think of Midas, you think of Midas and the gold touch. And it's supposed to be made of some sort of titanium alloy. But just looking at him in the package, the finish is very, it's very blah. It doesn't really, it's not as striking or as, you know, visually engaging as I'd like it to be. I think maybe they could have gone with a different uh, finish. Maybe something a little bit more metallic or something more candied. Um... The happy figure, I'm really stoked to be getting John Favreau. I don't think there's too many John Favreau action figures on the market. So let's take this out. Okay, so I'm going to review Iron Man first just because I'm more excited about the John Favreau figure. Alright, so here is. Iron Man, I believe it was Mark 21, and this is the Midas armor. So I don't have too much recollection of all the different armors in the Iron Man films. Um, the, it's been such a long time since I've seen any of them. So, you know, once you ha have this in hand, it feels like every other Iron Man figure we've gotten over the last, like, I don't know, five or six years. Which isn't a bad thing, because, I mean, all the Iron Man figures we've gotten, they've always been really nice. Um... Okay, I'm liking this at least. <laughs> all right, I take it back. <laughs> I all right, I got to go back and check my other Iron Man figures because I don't remember if any of them have this. This is really cool. So if anyone remembers this, uh, this feature on any previous Iron Man, please list it in the comments below. But all right, they they just instantly won me over with this cool jetpack effect. Cause all right, so I have 
a bunch of Iron Men. So before the Marvel Legends figures came out, I was really invested in the Marvel three and three quarters action figures, uh, which are also known, I think, as Marvel Universe, Marvel Infinity, and I think even at one time Marvel Legends. So the smaller three and three quarter figures, they're about the size of like a three and three quarter GI Joe or a three three and quarter um, Star Wars figures. So at the time before the Black Series came out, that was Hasbro's for many years. That was Hasbro's mainline um, superhero figures. They had you know, the much smaller three and three quarter figures, and they released so many Iron Man figures for that. I mean, they also had um, six inch figures, and I believe a couple of those were migrated into the Marvel Legends figures. Um, but a big chunk of those Iron Man figures were the smaller scale, and I. I remember just amassing a giant collection of those. So I have all those different armors. And then once I made the leap to the six inch Marvel legend figures, you know, it felt kind of fun just buying a bunch of Iron Man, you know, toys. And if you check, if you take a look at my list of videos, there's a bunch of Iron Man figures. So, you know, I do love the character. I do love the toys, but I think after a while, I just got tired of this feel. It just felt like us handling the same armor over and over again. And, you know, reason being, a lot of the time, a lot of the figures are just repainted. You know, they might have um, a couple of things retooled, you know, maybe a different head or forearm or something. But for the most part, a lot of the Iron Man we get, it's always the same, you know, three or four armors just rotated around, but with, you know, color swaps or like battle damage or maybe like a different Tony Stark head or something. But this guy, I don't remember if this is a new feature or if this is something on an older figure. It's been such a long time since I've played around my Iron Man figures. But this was a pleasant surprise. I didn't know it was going to do this. I love this this whole deal with, you know, Iron Man suits. Especially like Rescue. Rescue has something similar to this also. You know, anytime they, they go airborne and then they need like extra jet propulsion. You know, these cool panels and wings flap out in the back. And I think that's awesome. Which is even cooler is that if you start from the bottom panels and lift up... The top panels start rising also, so it's kind of cool. So, but at the same time, is this worth you know the suggested retail price of fifty two fifty two dollars? Oh, definitely not. I would have appreciated it if they gave us more accessories, you know, like maybe a different head or extra hands. And it's like I said, this finish here, it's not as. I'm noticing two different shades of like. A, a gold there's a metallic finish that kind of like surrounds the arc reactor right here and then there's kind of like a more muted like titanium color but i'm not sure if that's just the actual color of the plastic itself but looking beyond the paint application the sculpting is nice um i'm not sure if the details as crisp as it used to be because after a while molds degrade and then they kind of lose their sharpness and the edges aren't as as defined as they used to be, but this one, it doesn't look like the mold degradation is that bad because the cuts are still a little pretty deep. Articulation is articulation is the same. You know, if you've held this figure before, you know what what it does. Um, head rotates. It, there's there is a hinge at the neck, but it only goes so far because the back of the helmet will hit the neck. So this is as far back as, as he'll look up. But he does have, I believe, an ab crunch. So it might allow for some back movement. But again, the armor pieces here are going to hit this lower back and spine. So it's not going to arch back that far. But he could at, uh, he can't even crunch forward all that well. He has no waist swivel, but he does have a mid torso swivel because of the ab crunch. Arms are the same as before. Um, they can rotate up and down, but they're hindered by the shoulder pads, so they can only go so far. The shoulder pads is a softer rubber, but at the same time, I'd kind of refrain from getting too nuts and you know overreaching because this plastic here might stretch or crease or get stressed out. His arms go out, so you know get them out that far. You could go higher, I guess, but. I don't know. If you don't have to go that, if you don't have no reason to stretch it out that far, just leave it alone. Uh, bicep swivel. He has double jointed elbows, and it's nice because one um, one of the joints is hidden on the inside, so only one's exposed on the outside. So that's nice. 
And it's kind of cool that all this um, titanium is kind of broken up by this dark gray at the joint. So that, that looks pretty cool. It would have been nice if they kind of expanded that gray into other parts too, like maybe at the upper arm or along parts of the torso. But then again, I'm not sure if you'd be breaking from continuity and what it actually looks like in the film. His leg doesn't kick out that far just because there's some hindrance right there. So you're only looking at that. There's a thigh cut, uh, double jointed knees. And again, we're getting some of that dark gray where the joints are, which is a nice, cool, subtle detail. Um, ankle articulations, what you expect from this figure. Nothing new. But the back, it's like I said, the back is where I think the, the figure really shines. Because as, as plain, as generic this guy kind of looks, you know, the minute, you know, the minute he wants to go into jet propulsion mode and fly away, it's like, whoa, you know, these things pop out and it's pretty neat. I kind of wish they do incorporate this feature more on other Iron Man figures, but on different parts of his body. Like, it'd be cool if they could somehow figure out that technology and apply it to, like, maybe his forearms. So, like, maybe a panel opens up on his forearms and maybe, like, a repulsor ray or, like, a machine gun pops out or something. Or, like, on same with, like, a war machine figure. But yeah, this is so cool. I love this so much. This is so awesome. So yeah, if there's a, actually a normal Iron Man figure with this feature, let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, it's been a while since I've kind of fiddled around my Iron Man figures, and I have so many that I don't remember if any of the more traditional color-schemed Iron Man have this feature. Um, in terms of comparing with other Iron Man figures, uh, let me see what I got available. So right now, um, these are the life Iron Man figures I have on my desk. I have a Marvel Select Ultimate Iron Man, and this is an old. This is a much older figure, but this is like one of my favorite Iron Man armors. This Marvel Select figures are much larger in scale. You're looking at something maybe between seven to eight inches uh, in terms of their scale. Um, really, really cool figure. And I got the Avengers Mech Strike. Iron Man here and if you've watched my videos before you know I love the budget Avengers stuff um, this especially this is a cool toy you know it's kind of like a Hulkbuster and you can throw Iron Man in there and the, the budget figures are much smaller in scale also they don't fall under the six inch banner these are more like five to five and a half inches and we'll just, a little comparison in height So yeah, I can see it's like about half an inch shorter. The nice thing with some of the budget figures though is that, you know, as I've stated before, is that they're trying to give them more articulation. So not only do they kick up, but they could kick out. And then they even have like bend at the knee and they have like a knee swivel. So the articulation on the budget figures, it's much improved than like the last few years. And I think it's great that Hasbro is doing that. Set those guys aside. So yeah, this is a nice figure. Um... You know, if this figure was offered individually, would I pay $19 for it? Uh, possibly. You know, I like this gimmick here. And if they gave him additional accessories, like, you know, additional hands or blaster effects or an alternate head, I would buy this as a single figure, definitely. Um, but as a two-pack figure without any accessories beyond just the, the blast effects, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's worth that $52 altogether. You know, just getting these two guys. Is it worth the purchase though? Uh, it depends. If you're like a completionist and you need to build up your hall of armors and you want every Iron Man armor known to man, you definitely then get it. But if you're like me and you're kind of burned out on Iron Man, as much as you love the character, um, it might be an easy pass. The big selling point for me was this figure right here. You know, Happy Hogan, AKA um, John Favreau, the actor and director. So for me, I this is really cool. I love John Favreau. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of his film Chef, and that in his uh, cooking show, The Chef Show with Chef Roy Choi. That's a that's a fun watch. And if you ever catch that too, I think it's on Netflix in, in the U.S. Um, it's either Netflix or Amazon. I can't remember. Maybe Netflix. So on The Chef Show with Roy Choi, there's actually an episode where. Um, John Favreau and Roy, they visit Skywalker Ranch, um, you know, where Lucasfilm is located. And it's a cool episode because they talk to Dave Filoni and Filoni's on the show. And it's what's even cooler is that, you know, if, if you piece all the their conversation together, you can kind of gather that 
that episode was filmed like around the time they were filming um, the first season of The Mandalorian. So it's kind of a neat episode. Um, John Favreau, he's very down to earth. He's very funny. And, you know, I love The Mandalorian and, you know, him playing Happy in Iron Man and in the Spider-Man films. It's, it's always a treat. He always steals the scene and, you know, Happy even has an appearance in the new animated What If series. So check that out if you haven't also. So for me, I needed the set just for this figure. But like I said, I don't think it was, it's worth the $52. But, you know, I was willing to pay, you know, and get this on clearance. So this figure, it feels um, it feels the same as like every other Marvel Legends figure we get in a suit. I want to say the body might be a little bit different. Because, all right, so in real life, John Favreau is a much huskier, stockier build of a, of a man. And that definitely conveys here, you know, I, I want to say maybe it looks like he lost a couple of pounds, but it's still, you know, the likeness is well done. The face sculpting looks like John Favreau. Um, you know, if you had a bunch of these, these would be great to have just for like fodder or customizing. Like I love the, the suited figures, but it feels like every suited figure is pretty much the same thing. It seems like with the exception of like the TVA Loki that we got recently, um, you know, that has, I think some slight retooling to it. I think, uh, but they always feel like it's the same body, the same legs and the same arms. Um, unfortunately I didn't bring any of my other, you know, suited figures here to compare it with, but if you've held one, you know, you've held them all. But the fact that this is John Favreau, I think it's worth, it's worth having. And for me, you know, paying $37 for both figures was really, you know, that's really a deal. And if you can find it for cheaper, you know, go for it. So check out your target stores, you know, um, not all targets price things the same. I've noticed like sometimes one target might have stuff on clearance where another one might not. One one store might have their sale prices marked down differently than another. So it's kind of weird. I don't get that. Um, maybe it's just me. I don't know. But yeah, for me, $37 was a sweet spot on this on this two set. You know, if you can find it cheaper, more power to you. You know, if you can find it for cheaper than $37, let me know. I'd love to hear that. But back to this figure... It's nice, you know, it's a guy in a suit. <laughs> it does what he does. It's happy, you know, everyone loves happy. Um, I think it'd be cool if they actually even gave us like the Scarlett Johansson um, civilian figure, like when she, like before you know that she's Black Widow, you know, she, she's working for Tony Stark and then she's kind of dressed up in civilian garb. You know, it'd be cool if they gave us that figure also. I believe that was Iron Man 2, was it? I think. But I don't know, either way, it's happy. He rounds out my collection of Iron Man. Oh, okay, so let's rate these figures numerically. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't really go over the articulation with this guy. So the articulation's standard fare. Head rotates. You can look up. Arm rotates. Bicep swivel. Um, double jointed elbow. Wrist articulation. You have this, like, softer plastic. It's almost like a vest. And... Um, if you have really bad eyesight and squint, you can pretend this is like um, Jason Alexander, a.k.a. George Costanza from Seinfeld. You know, all he needs is like sunglasses. But I think you'd probably have to take like an inch off the figure to make him shorter, a little bit huskier. But if you squint hard enough, it kind of looks like George. All right, I'm rambling. Um, he has a waist swivel, like a kick up, about like that. Uh, thigh cut, double jointed knees. And I think this might, I take it back. This could be a, like one of the newer molds for the um, suited figures just because the pins are hidden, which are which is nice. So you don't see the pins on the suit, which is awesome. And they're double jointed. So could I get it to bend? Yeah, there we go. So yeah, uh, some articulation. He has nice shoes. All right. Okay, so let's rate these figures numerically. All right, this guy is something that we've all held and played with before. Um, I like this though. So for me, this is the saving grace, but the paint job is very blah. At the lowest, I'd give this guy a six. At the highest, a 7, but that's a very forgiving 7. Uh, I would rate it higher if, you know, the paint application was different. You know, if they used richer colors, more vibrant colors. 
If it came with more accessories and blast effects, you know, I'd definitely give them a higher rating than just like a six or seven. But for now, very average Iron Man figure. Um, you know, if you disagree, just let me know why. This guy, very average also, um, but I love Jean Favreau. So I'm going to give this guy a pass and just say he's a seven. But not on the merit of, you know, his quality as an action figure, but the fact that, you know, you kind of need him to complete Iron Man. Um, not that you need a whole Iron Man collection, but, you know, we have so many Tony Stark figures. He needs his, you know, a, he needs his, like, assistant. He needs his, his compadre. He needs his, like, confidant. He needs his main man with him. So you do need this Happy Hogan. And with Happy's role kind of, like, um, growing to where he's kind of almost, like, a surrogate, I don't want to say father figure, but, like, a really, you know, he's always looking out for Peter Parker. So in that sense that, you know, if you have a Tom Holland, Peter Parker figure, you kind of need a Happy Hogan to, like, you know, talk some wise into Peter and look out for him. So yeah, this you need this to fill out your Marvel Legends family. You know, he's kind of like the conscience of like so many characters. So okay, wrapping this up. Um, once again, my name is Lou. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you much for all your support. I appreciate all the likes and comments. Um, you know, sometimes all it takes is this one really positive comment, you know, to keep me going and, you know, to really brighten my day. I love action figures. And uh, ever since the pandemic, <laughs> I haven't really got to, like, talk action figures with my friends. Um, truth is, a lot of my friends, too, they kind of, like... I'm like in this state of arrested development. Um, all my friends, you know, they all got married. And they have kids and families and stuff like that. Whereas I'm the single. <laughs> I'm the single one in my friends, you know, my group of friends. And I was a dude that like, you know, when all my buddies got married and stuff and their wives wouldn't let them have their like toys and comic books and action figures in the house anymore. You know, all of a sudden, you know, I, they just pan them off to me and I, gra I you know, I'd gladly accept them. So yeah, I don't really have too many people to talk toys with anymore. Everyone's kind of growing up now. So that's why I have this YouTube channel. You know, it gives me a chance to like, you know, share my love and interest of these action figures with you. So I thank you for, you know, all your support. It means a lot. You know, anytime you share a story or your love of action figures or, you know, you know, just hearing every now and then like, wow, you have some really cool content. You know, I really appreciate that. So thank you for that. You know, it's greatly appreciated. So until the next video. Stay safe, be kind to one another, collect lots of toys, and then just, just enjoy your life. All right, take care.